It's a little bit different feel this morning. Uh, to give God a ton of credit and to allow people to share what God's doing and hopefully to encourage you and inspire you and what God can do in your life or somebody's life uh, around you. And so uh, there's four people going to share their story this morning. Uh, they're not nervous at all. You all, I'm sure you are nervous. So we'll just let you be nervous. They're not nervous. But the first one is Dick. Would you give Dick a big hand? Good morning. I and uh, you said it was just going to be you and me. Yeah, it was. They all decided to come for a little bit. So, um, but, but Dick, would you just share with us a little bit? I mean, your, your story, where you were this uh, a year ago, Fourth of July. Where were you at in life? Well, I would have been working because that's where I hid out to, to stay away from myself. I guess so I couldn't find any happiness at home or anywhere else or with myself. So I, I d dove into work. Um, and that never got anywhere. It made me uh, a recluse. I stayed at home. When I wasn't at work and I was at home doing nothing or watching TV. And it was just a long, boring life. <clears throat> if any of you have ever seen the movie Groundhog Day, it's a lot better to watch than to live. And that's what I was doing. And, uh, but I didn't know how to get out of it. I tried different things, weird little things, being a vegan for about two years. Lost a lot of weight, but that's all. And the, Animals in the neighborhood felt safer, but but <laughs> but I found the gateway food to uh, to the rest of the food and meat, and that's cheese. If you eat cheese, it'll lead to something worse. So um, so I tried that, and I tried exercise, running. I thought something was going to work, and nothing ever did. And uh, every day I was just hoping the next day would be better. Get this day out of the way, maybe tomorrow will be better. But I had no reason to think it was going to happen. But that's how I lived for years. What were you trying to fix there? Or what were you trying to fill? What were you going after? Happiness. And you just could never find no. it in those other things? No. No, couldn't find anything. And uh, I, I kind of gave up on it and figured this is the way it's going to be. This is how life is going to go and the rest of your life is going to be this way and just yeah. kind of same thing day after day. Yeah. But then um, uh, this fall, there's something that happened this fall. You met somebody. And you'd, you'd met a couple different people along the way. You told me about your plumber friend right. and another guy. And then what happened this fall? Well, this fall, um, I work at a pizza store, as some of you probably already know. And uh, it sounds like a beginning of a joke, but a guy named Mark walked into a pizza store. <laughs> and, of course, it was Tuesday because he's pretty cheap. And we have, we have, we have cheap pizzas on Tuesday. So he, uh, he came in, and he, he asked me if, if I was a believer. Of course, most customers don't ask me that. I wasn't quite ready for that. They're asking for pepperoni right, or yeah, cheese. Yeah. Right, but he, he already had that. Oh, okay. But as he was leaving, he asked if I was a believer, and I, and I stammered a little bit because every time I get asked that, most of the time I'd be kind of standoffish with it because I didn't grow up really, uh, in a real religious family, didn't go to church much. Didn't much at all. It. You told me before, you never, I mean, once well, in a while. Oh, very seldom. Very you know, seldom. I, I grew up on a dairy farm, and Dad used that for an excuse. He blamed the cows. But when he sold the cows, he still didn't go. So <laughs> I'm thinking there might have been something else. Might have uh, been. Uh, so, um, so you didn't grow up going to church, didn't really know God at all, no. didn't have any interest, no. funerals and, and weddings. That's the only time to I church came to church. Building, yep. Right? Yep. And so it was, uh, and I felt uncomfortable when I did go because I had no idea what to do. Right. Uh, so here's I, Mark in the right. store. Well, Mark asked me that, and I said, well, I don't know. I, I mean, I'd like to believe that, but I'm not sure I believe it. It's something I'd be really neat to believe in, but I just wasn't, wasn't there. And then he's told me about um, uh, this church, how much he liked this church, and how everybody treated uh, each other and uh, treated the gospel. And um, then he told me about he has a Wednesday fellowship at his house, and he invited me to that. And I go, oh, wait, slow down a little bit. And, <laughs> but he piqued my curiosity, so um, I... Uh, the next week, he came in on Tuesday again, and uh, I asked him if he could uh, tell me more over coffee, and he said, sure. So we went to coffee, the, I think, within a week, and uh, that was, ended up being a three-hour lunch. He's, a, he's not a slow reader. He's a, he talks, and he has a lot to say. He knows the Bible, and he knows he's got a lot of history, and he's a fisher for men, and he, he does that all the time, and he's really good at it, and he's a mentor of mine now. Uh, so I, I said, okay, I'll... Uh, I'll try your fellowship group. And uh, so I went. And you met some people there? 
and one of them, Rodney, he was uh, part of Freedom Ministries, and right. so you went to that celebration night back yep. in December here about seven months ago. Right. It Tell was us about that experience. Well, yeah, it was about the second time I was at the Wednesday group, and Rodney invited us all to uh, come to the celebration for Freedom Ministry, and I really wasn't sure what it was, but I knew it was here, and I thought, well, this is a good way for me to come to church without going to church. Yeah. I I'd, I'd go to this program that I didn't have to participate in, and and see what was going on in case there was any weird rituals going on or yeah. anything. That's a good strategy. That's right. a good strategy. I like right. it. Right. And so that was a good start, and that was an amazing. If you have not been to that, you need to go. I get your tickets now because it is an amazing, it's an amazing uh, situation where you got people that, that don't even know each other will tell everybody else what they've been through and how, how Jesus has saved them, and then everybody's so supportive in there. I've never been in, around a group like that. And so that got you uh, at ease, come more comfortable, like, okay, they're not just a bunch of weirdos doing crazy stuff, but this is real people and right. real life change. You right. hear all these stories. And so you showed up that next Sunday mm-hmm. uh, for a Christmas celebration Sunday there. Was it? Yeah. Okay. That's all right. I, I'll keep the story straight. I know you're <laughs> not nervous at all. So Yeah. Yeah, so you showed up that next Sunday. I guess it was Christmas. Um. <laughs> We'll have to check the records. Right, we'll I'm check the records. Sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, you got the cameras. You can check that out for me. Um, yes, I did. Now, it was uh, very welcoming. Everybody was so uh, welcoming and friendly and seemed so non-judgmental. And that's one problem I have. I, I, I hate being judged, but I am the best judger there is. I judge everybody, and, um, and it bothers me. So uh, worry and judgment, that's one of my big deals. And this looked like a place that might help me. And so over the course of, of those few weeks of going to the men's group and hearing the celebration uh, at night and all the people story and coming on Sunday, you decided to say yes to Christ and, and accept the, the free gift of salvation that Mark had shared with you and, and others had shared with you, right? You had, you had other, several other people share with you along the right. years, but you just were, were not open, right. not, not ready to receive. Or, or you told me earlier, sometimes people would lead into a scam that way, right, saying, yeah. I'm a Christian, and then try to sell you something or, right. or do something Right. Uh, that was just not right. And right. so, so you, so you find Jesus around mm-hmm. Christmas time mm-hmm. and say yes to him and turn your right. life over. And then you got baptized, uh, April 10th. Yeah. You got baptized and that was fun. Yes. Uh, and then you started serving right? and jumped on you at Easter. You served for the first time, greeting people in the parking lot and right. helping out. And, uh, and then you said, I, I, I thought that was fun. Can mm-hmm. I do that again? And we said, sure. Anytime you want. Right. Yeah. And so right. you joined in on the ministry team and then your first day serving, would you share that quick story with us? Your first day, like uh, being right. at the door, uh, just as you're growing here, right. following Jesus right. and growing and connecting, and now you're serving. Share us that story. Well, it was last Sunday in April, I know, because I got in our uh, group that does April and July. And so I was doing the door, greeting at the door. And I, the only way I knew what to do was I saw the people do it when I came. So I went out to greeting. It was by myself. And uh, a guy comes walking up with a, looks like a Bible in his hand and a, flyer, some piece of paper. I thought, you look like everybody else, because a lot of people do that. But he walked up to me and asked me in real broken English. He, he had a real thick accent. I'm not sure where he was from, but he wasn't from Spokane. And he just wanted to know directions somewhere. Okay, well, I'm, you remember that, Brent? Uh, I was, uh, I'm not good at directions anyway, but I had a job. I didn't want to get fired on my first day. So I, because <laughs> I knew Barb was watching. <laughs> But, so I look inside for help, and I didn't want to get the guy lost anyway, so I looked inside for help, and I saw Brent there with another gentleman, I don't, don't remember who it was, and I knew he'd help. So I bring in that for quick with a little map inside the Brett and the other gentleman, and of course, you know how two guys on map are. <laughs> they had to study and discuss all the different routes and gas mileage and the whole thing, and it was, and it was taking a little bit longer than I was... Because that was away from my post, and here's this guy outside. And so I look outside, and there he was. Every single person walking into that door walked up to him and shook his hand and, and welcomed him. He thought he was the greeter. And you should have <laughs> seen the look on his face. I mean, initially it started out like, uh, well, that's kind of weird. And then, then it just great big smile, like, this is amazing. You know, Disneyland or Disney World calls themselves the, 
um, happiest place on earth. He must have thought he landed in the, the friendliest place on earth. Yeah. Because everybody walked up, shook his hand. It was amazing. That's awesome. I don't know if he ever, he's still walking around the neighborhood. I think the directions weren't too good. <laughs> but, but I thank you, Brent, for helping me. Uh, okay. That's awesome. Just, just got it at work. And so now, now a year later, where are you at as far as just you mentioned that, that worry and mm -hmm. being able to trust people and right. isolated and alone right. last year. Where are you at this year? What has God done in your heart? Well, I realized after a couple of weeks of fellowship and coming to church here that what I was missing was I, friendship. I had I moved here 25 years ago, and in those 25 years, the only friends I realized I had were my kids' friends' parents. I hadn't developed any of my own. I had no other outside interests. I worked, and I came home. Worked, and came home. And where I work, I work with teenagers and early 20s, so I'm not going to hang out with them, obviously. Uh, and so I realized then when I met these guys uh, at the fellowship and here at church, then I realized that that's what I was missing. And here, everybody's so friendly and sincere. I, it's, I didn't think people could be like that. So then I went into, am I ahead of schedule here? I went ahead right? into uh, <clears throat> Freedom Ministry. I decided to go myself. As soon as I saw the celebration last fall, I knew I had to do this. And keep in mind that <clears throat> I'm afraid to do anything. I, I'm hesitant. I don't want to put myself out there. I don't want to be the dumbest one in the room, which I knew I was going to be when I went to all these different things. <clears throat> but nobody ever made me feel that way. And uh, so I successfully went through the Freedom Ministry 12-step and met some great people. Didn't realize there was 10 to 12 guys in one room could tell what's bothering them and other people trying to help them be sincere about it. I, I just blew me away. And uh, I'm signed up again for the fall. I can't wait to get started again. But that's what I was missing was friendship. And, and now I don't worry as much. Um, I decided about two, three months ago, I came up with my own acronym. I like acronyms. Um, it's easier to spell. But um, since worry was such a problem on me, I decided to declare wow. And that's war on worry. <clears throat> You see how many times in the Bible it talks about worry, and basically comes. They probably could have said it once. It's just said, "Don't do it. <laughs> it's not going to help." But they knew we weren't that quick learners, so they told us lots and lots and lots of times. And that was one of my big problems: was worry. Go to bed and worry. Wake up worried. It's just it's and not very comfortable. Now you're free from worry. Mostly. God's, God saved you. Yeah, mostly. Right. I worried Working. about this. Yeah. I, I I didn't know there was no dress code for one thing. Yeah. Dick, you got a comedy routine in your future. Would you give Dick a big hand? All right.